All right, welcome everyone. We are here to talk about the first diagram that's on the new syllabus. We're here to think about the production possibilities curve. So to start with here, uh, some assumptions that we should probably consider before we begin talking about what this model is, is first of all, we're assuming that this model only shows the producer's perspective. So this is the production possibilities curve. So we are thinking about businesses and those businesses making things. We're here to try to answer with this model the three basic economic questions. So that's one assumption. We're not considering what's being bought or maybe what's not being bought. We're here to think about what's being produced. Okay. So the example we're going to go with here is Tesla, one of the only car companies that is offers fully electric vehicles. Um, we're going to assume that they only can make two things, cars and trucks. Obviously, this is not a realistic assumption um, in real life because most businesses can make more than two things. But um, this is a bit of a simpler model. So we are we still can show a lot of things with the simple model even with that assumption. Okay, another, a third assumption here is that we are assuming that the factors of production are constant and specifically technology. Okay, so here are our four factors of production, land, labor, capital, and management. Okay, um, those are all pretty self-explanatory with the exception of capital and management. There's a distinction that needs to be made there. So capital, think of that as like physical assets. I'm currently recording this video on the school computer. That is a piece of capital of the school. Or this whiteboard behind me, that's a piece of capital of the school. Or even these markers here are capital of the school. So physical tools, right? So management is listed as its own separate factor of production. Management, or you might see in the book as entrepreneurship, that those people are the decision makers of a business. They are listed as a separate factor of production because it is their job to decide what to do with the land, labor, and the capital. So in this case, the management's going to be Elon Musk. He is kind of uh, this visionary leader of Tesla. He's kind of his own factor of production um, anyway. Okay, so the different things that we can do with this model we can show opportunity cost of two types. We can show a constant opportunity cost or an increasing opportunity cost. We can show scarcity. We can show that with any economics diagram. But again, we are assuming the factors of production are fixed. So that's where the scarcity part comes in. We can show choices about what businesses are going to make. We can show the extent to which a business has is using its resources. Do they have any factors of production that are not being used to their fullest extent. We can assess how efficient a business is. Um, are they making all of what they possibly can make? And we can show whether a business is growing and that it can produce more things or whether it's shrinking and it can produce fewer things. Let's start off with the constant opportunity cost. So you're going to show this with not a curve, not a production possibilities curve, but kind of like a 45 degree downward sloping line. Okay, so let's start with point A here. We're going to label that point A. Okay, and then we're going to connect the dots to each axis. We're going to label this point C A. So in other words, the amount of cars produced at point A. And then we're going to label this T A as in the number of Tesla trucks produced at point A. So let's say uh, Tesla wants to make more trucks. They could do that pretty simply. They would just have to repurpose the factors of production that they have. So in this case, we're going to say they are shifting along our production possibility curve to point B. So again, we're going to label this CB and TB, or the amount of cars produced at point B and the amount of trucks produced at point B. 
So in this case, the opportunity cost is constant, whether they go to shift from here to here or A to B or B to C, the rate of the opportunity cost is going to stay the same no matter where you are in the curve, okay? So in this case, let's say in order to make 100 more trucks, they had to give up 100 cars, right? Because they only have so many, uh, they only have so much land, they only have so much labor, they only have so much capital, constant opportunity cost, right? No matter where you are on the curve, the, opportunity, the rate of opportunity cost is the same, okay? So it's also important to note that this is a choice. Tesla's making a choice here. They think they can make more money making trucks, so they have chosen to give up some production of cars. That's a choice, right? So we can show constant opportunity cost and choice. Let's get to what increasing opportunity cost looks like. So this is actually going to be shown as a curve. Okay, so show it as a curve there. And let's say to start, we're right in the middle here. Point A. So again, C A, cars at point A, trucks at point A. Now let's say Tesla makes that same decision. And they're going to choose to give up some cars in order to make more trucks. Well, the opportunity cost is going to change. Let's say they move from point A to point B here. Trucks at point B, cars at point B. So you'll notice that the opportunity cost is about the same, maybe a little bit smaller than, than our first diagram that we drew here. But you'll notice um, they've only gained a few more trucks, right? So they've had to give up maybe the same amount to make, we'll say, maybe only 25 more trucks. Okay, so in this case, the ratio of their opportunity cost has changed. They've had to give up the same amount to only get a, a little bit more. Okay, so that's increasing opportunity cost. When we have a curve like that, the opportunity cost is not going to be the same at, uh, for each shift. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, well, why would a business have a, a PPC that is a straight line? Or why would a business have a PPC that is a curve? Okay, and the answer to that depends on, well, how similar are these two things? How similar are they? So for example, an iPad and an iPhone are, are nearly the same product, right? Like a, a, an iPad is basically a bigger version of an iPhone. There are some tech differences, obviously, but um, in terms of the materials that you need, the software that's running for those things, they're all, it's pretty much the same, you know, same thing, right? So in that case, you might have a constant opportunity cost. That might be pretty constant. In other words, if Apple wanted to make 100 more iPads, they'd probably give up 100 um, iPhones. Whereas if you make two things that are totally different, um, you know, let's say Apple wants to make iPhones and the wireless earbuds, right? So those are two totally different products, in which case they probably have an increasing opportunity cost to switch from one to the other. Okay, so let's look at the extent to which a, to which a business is efficient and whether or not they are employing their resources efficiently. Okay, so we're going to draw a PPC with a curved line. That's usually how you do it, okay? If you're drawing pretty much any PPC model, just draw it as a curve. That's probably going to be the best way. And so a point of A here, A means that that business is 100% efficient. In other words, they are making as much as they possibly can make at any of these points along the line. If the point of production is on the line, that means they are maxing out the productivity of their four factors of production. Okay? And the reason why they cannot 
um, make beyond that is because they have a limited number of factors of production. So anything that's beyond the line out here is impossible to make. Any of these production points are impossible because they need more factors of production to produce out here or here or here. Okay? But inside the curve, they have the factors of production to produce here. These points, any point inside the curve is possible, but if it's inside of the curve, that means the business is inefficient. So if we have a point of B, at point B, there are unemployed resources. So Tesla is a good example for this. We are now recording this video um, in August, okay? And we're still dealing with the pandemic, but even back in March or April, California, which is where most Teslas are made, they were on a pretty strict lockdown and the workers at Tesla couldn't go to work. Um, so in that case, they had a labor shortage. There were still Teslas being made in other parts of the world, but <clears throat> you could say that Tesla was not producing to the fullest extent that it could because they had capital that was sitting kind of idle. Um, they had workers that couldn't physically make it to work, and they had factories that were empty. So anything inside the curve means that there are unemployed factors of production that are not being used. If it's on the curve, that means the business is efficient and they're making all of what they can make. But if it's outside the curve, that is not a possible combination of things to make because they don't have the factors of production. Now, Tesla is a company that has been growing like crazy the past 10 years. They've added a lot of land. They've bought a lot of new factories. They've added a whole bunch of new workers. And they've added a lot of things that, um, you know, sort of machines and different things like that to help them make their very capital intensive products. So we are going to show that Tesla can expand as a business. So we're going to start with an initial PPC with a point A. All right. So again, this is CA, the number of cars produced at point A, the number of trucks produced at point A. Now, Tesla's been expanding. They've been moving out into other countries. They've hired other workers. They've added uh, other pieces of capital. So it's this question here. Whenever you have a PPC question on a test, you should start with this. Have factors of production been added or have they been lost? In this case, they've been added, which is another way to say that Tesla can now produce more than they could um, before they bought those factors of production. So in this case, the curve is going to kind of shift out like this, all right? So this is going to be our new curve, okay? I'm going to draw it in green there, nice color for expansion. And we're going to say that they make the same proportion of trucks and cars. So this is going to be trucks produced at point B. We're going to show an increase there. And cars produced at point B another increase there. So that's expansion. That's when a business adds any combination of the factors of production. Okay. So the other part of this is that sometimes businesses, especially during a recession, which we're, all, we're kind of dealing with right now, um, if consumers stop buying the products of a business, that business will have to lay off some workers. They'll have to maybe sell some of their equipment and sell some of their real estate, right? So if a business has factors of production that get damaged for some reason, or they sell them off, or they just remove them, then we're going to do the opposite shift of what we just showed here. And we're going to show that the production possibility curve can shift inward. Okay, so we're going to call that point C. Cars produced at point C, 
trucks produced at point C, and a decrease in production of both. Okay, so this is kind of the starter diagram in IB economics. Um, it's a pretty simple model, but we can do a lot of different things with it. We just need to keep in mind what the assumptions are and the different features that it can do, right? So we can show constant opportunity cost. We can show an increasing opportunity cost. We can assess whether a business is making as much as they can or do they have unemployed factors of production. And then we can assess whether a business is making more or whether that business is making less. Okay, thank you guys.